connections you get from your own connections. So from your own friends, from your own family, from somebody who refers you to somebody. The most important connections or the most important network you build by being referred. Um, and that said, from somebody like me who has worked lots of years in recruitment, actually, mm -hmm. um, and the best leads or the, the most valuable contacts you get from referrals, okay. so from other okay. people who already worked with you or with people who worked with Again, you. Again, connections. Connections, yes. Hello everyone, my name is Christina Schulen and today I will talk with Sonia Dubois about entrepreneurial opportunities in Germany. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of questions because it's really popular popular topic mm -hmm. here and just like so could you tell time. about yes yourself and also about what do you do, mm -hmm. about business, about mm -hmm. professions and your of course experience. Mm -hmm. Sure, of course. So thanks for having me actually. Mm -hmm. My name is Sonia. Um, I actually come from a little town called Rostock in the northeast of Germany. Mm -hmm. mm, I studied in Barcelona. I actually studied psychology. So then lived eight years in Barcelona, actually in Spain, did a master's. And that master's was related a bit about entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, then I lived in Hamburg. Then I had a little break of eight months. Mm -hmm. I traveled the world, Southeast Asia. I had lots of incredible experiences, actually. Um, I lived two years in Hong Kong, and mm -hmm. now I'm living in Berlin since two and a half years, more or less. Yeah, feeling That's already true. like a real Berliner. <laughs> okay. Do you have any businesses? Yes. Could you tell about this? Sure. Um, I would like to start like super, super early back, right? Of course. Because sometimes businesses they come and go. You mm -hmm. open them and you close them, or you just have business ideas and you don't even open them because you decide yes. they're closed before you even mm -hmm. open them, right? And this is most of the time the right decision, in my opinion, from, from my experience, from what I've learned. But my very first business idea, I think I had when I was six years old. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, pretty okay. long time ago. Um, and actually, my family and me, we were traveling in, we, were tra we traveled to the US, to the USA, uh -huh. to San Francisco. Okay. And we just visited some friends from my mom, of my mom. And they had a little daughter. And together with her, <laughs> it's super strange, but what we did was, um, so we stopped in one of those gas oil stations okay. and they sold popcorn, like they were selling lots of popcorn, um, like the salty popcorn, which I, I didn't even know that existed back then, but yeah, salty pep popcorn and lemonade. And then we just made up the idea that we could sell salty popcorn and lemonade in the backyard and make some money out of it. <laughs> and actually, because it, actually the gas oil station was yeah. free popcorn yes. so we just got the free popcorn and then we um yeah we took it back home mm -hmm. and sold it in the backyard and then we um not not sold it but sold it in the backyard and we made a couple of coins out of it like for a six year old it was lots it's of cool, money it's yes. cool, it's cool, it's cool. so neighbors were coming around so it, it was really nice because um it got together all the neighborhood and yeah mm -hmm. okay but um mm -hmm. And you can say that this is like all cool stuff from our childhood. Yes, exactly. Yes. All cool stuff from mm -hmm. our childhood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, but then actually, um, I think my, my first real business I had when I was a pupil in school. So mm -hmm. I um, did the A level, during the A level, a couple of um, mm -hmm. yeah, pupils and me. So we were four actually. We came up with the idea to do. Um, school for pupils and mm -hmm. in German it's called Schüler machen Schule so mm -hmm. that means Schmasch so we call it Schmasch okay. so <laughs> it's like the initials mm -hmm. um, and what we did is we practically provided um, school um, support for pu pupils at the school who had the same teachers as okay. us and we just knew their teaching style and then we supported them on getting better grades um, <laughs> it went really well. We like took seven, I think it was already euros back then. We took seven euros per hour and it was really nice. Yeah. And then, but there um, were two other businesses actually. Mm -hmm. One was during my time in Spain, okay. but I wasn't, it wasn't my own business. I was just participating in the sales process, but um, it had to do with a, with a printing service. Mm -hmm. Not so fancy, actually, <laughs> but it was an own business. I was like the sales head of sales or whatever, and I was mm -hmm. just selling um, cartridges and <laughs> printing stuff. 
By the way, I know I know a lot of a lot of stories that uh, it's really interesting situation, but a lot of maybe uh, we know just like this at AliExpress. A lot of people buy mm. a lot of stuff from AliExpress yeah. and just like sell in our countries. Yeah, in Russia, so true. Russia is 100% sold with stuff mm. like this. Mm. Yeah. I understood you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you go through lots of those ideas or lots of those stories mm -hmm. until you reach what you want to do, or until you get to the point where you actually want to be. Yes, of course. And this is, I think, my most important business idea mm -hmm. or entrepreneurial um, opportunity, and this is actually Impact Berry. So um, this is something that I created together with my business partner in 2019. We incorporated in 2019, and it's a... Um, social impact coffee company so mm -hmm. it's a little startup um, and we we sell coffee from asia so from currently from indonesia and from vietnam but why did you decide from vietnam and asia not from for example mexico and etc yes um because we came across those um, areas when we traveled, because I, I mentioned... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, what I understand, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool ideas, uh, you, you can have this when you travel. Yes, that's Just true. Just doing your traveling trip. Yes, it's, it's true. That's why I recommend everyone who travel. Yeah, yes. travel to see the world, to like open your mind and just like get to understand how people in the world live, right? And how okay. to get out of your own comfort zone. Super mm -hmm. important. Yeah, so we traveled through first Vietnam and then, well, Russia, Mongolia, China, a month through China, only with a train. It was an incredible experience, actually. Then Vietnam, then Indonesia, then East Timor. It's like a tiny, tiny island um, close to Australia. I know. Uh -huh. And back to, yeah. I didn't know it before. That's why it was very, like, it's like yeah, yeah, that's why I explain everything. As you like, know, and it's always like, you know, capitals uh, because you have been there. True, yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we actually, it's all, it all started when we came across a little village mm -hmm. in Indonesia that was struck by earthquakes. So, um, back then it was 2018, actually. The idea started in 2018. Mm -hmm. We were traveling and we just heard of those crazy earthquakes, um, on a little island close to Bali. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, we have to give something back somehow. We have to do something about it. Or I wanted to do something because we're traveling so much, seeing so much, getting so much experience and, and so many things. Yeah. And we just wanted to give something back. So we traveled to that area that was completely broken, super struck okay. by earthquakes, remote village. Um, 500 families lost their family members or lost their homes. There were like people who had built up their own homes for three mm -hmm. to five years and then it was all broke by one earthquake. Super crazy. And we decided to go there and try to help a little bit mm -hmm. with our Western mm -hmm. mindsets, right? Because it's not always like you consider it help, but actually yeah. maybe it's not so helpful. <laughs> but yeah, so we okay. actually got to know what it means to live without water during three months, to live without any food supply or any um, infrastructure that's working, so right? Crazy. Yeah, and then we did a fundraise on Facebook. We um, had like some own money that we invested, super tiny amounts. Um, and we did lots of stuff actually with few money. So we did, we uh, built up some roofs for the people because they were actually living in like temporary shelters. Mm -hmm. We um, put down from one day to the other, super crazy, like a water pipeline system okay. and got the people running water again. Super crazy. Um, we built a toilet. And, yeah, I don't know. It's that kind of concrete stuff. Do you have photos that just sent to us? I do have photos. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're a little bit on my Instagram, my uh -huh. personal Instagram account. And then um, I think there are a couple of photos on our website as well, Impact Berry. Yeah. Okay. So as a thank you, those people there, they decided to give us two bags of coffee. And actually then, back then, we just went away and traveled and drank the coffee and say, hey, this is really nice coffee. Actually... Where did they get the coffee from? And this is where it sparked. So mm. we came to know that they were actually living in a jungle area full of like super lush, incredible green, really deep, thick jungle. Okay. And I don't know, one thing came to the other. We started to get to know people um, who knew some jungle farmers, who knew some other jungle farms. And then we started to visit and we started to get to know lots of people, lots of people, lots of people like they were involved in the area. And this is how we <laughs> started to purchase our first 20 kg of green coffee. I don't know if you have ever seen what's green coffee. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's like completely different than roasted actually okay. it, it smells completely different it looks completely different i mean you you recognize the the seeds right of but course 
Yeah, we learned so much about coffee that actually the cherry, the red cherry, yes. sometimes they are yellow as well, so they're different, um, st different species as well. And yeah, and actually, because you asked why only Asian countries, because mm -hmm. it's an ecological product. So um, mm -hmm. back then, I was also um, searching with a search engine that's Uh, called Ecosia. I don't know if you know it. Um, they are based in Berlin as yeah. well from a Berlin uh, creator or from mm -hmm. a Berlin um, Unternehmer. Um, and I really like the concept because they were um, distributing to the world, okay, let's go, we need to do something about climate change. We need to do something about like decreasing the 1.5 degrees, right? <laughs> Because at, this, at this moment when you understood that, okay, I want to create this, could you tell, could you tell to us about, could you tell us about your steps? Yes. What uh, did you start to do it for this? For example, okay, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Next step, what, what was it? Yes, I remember because I didn't do it alone. Um, I think that would be my first advice to everybody who wants to build a business. If you're not a lonely wolf and you just like to do things by your own, get a very good partner. Get a very, very good partner about it. And know your weaknesses or know the things that you don't just don't enjoy doing and find somebody who enjoys doing those things. But do you think to work with relative, is it okay or no relatives? Um, I think uh, you have a very big trust relationship mm -hmm. with family, relatives, right? Yes, family. Yes. But... You sometimes um, reduce your capacity and potential to find other talent because there's so much talent out there. And if you only work with your family, then you really decrease your chances to get like really crazy. Yeah. yeah. yeah? yeah. But okay, the steps were, um, I, and I think the steps are super different in every. Okay. For everyone, um, obviously there's like an admin step, but there's like the first whole creation or creative part about it, right? You have to have the idea mm -hmm. and you have to be aware or you have to be confident that this is the idea that you want to do. And then you just have to do it. Okay. So I remember as it was today, the idea sparked in the, in a taxi. We were, we were actually with my business partner taking a taxi in Jakarta because we were um, sleeping at a friend's place because mm -hmm. we were just traveling to Hong Kong and had to bring the key to him to where he was working in the office. Okay. And then in the taxi, we started to do a business canva. I don't know why. We just started doing it. And we said, okay, this is the business that we can... Canva like it just link, yes? Like the application where... No, no, it's it. like... Um, it's like... Um, like a swaft, you okay. know, it's like a, you just uh, write down, okay, this is the opportunities, this is the threats, uh -huh. this is okay. what you can do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we started doing okay. that and started like calculating in our minds, would it make sense to really start to invest that kind of time or that amount of time? Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, so the steps were you have to find the farmers, you have to build connections to the farmers, you have to find, you have to define the coffee, like is it real good coffee? Because we didn't want just to sell anything, right? Yeah. We wanted to give back something. So you have to calculate, okay, how much margin, um, do you have to actually fund social projects? Because actually Impact Barrier is about, mm -hmm giving back to the communities in the remote villages as well. So f in the first two years, we um, planted 117 trees, for yes, instance. Years. Okay. Yeah. We funded um, water filters because we saw that in those remote areas, um, the waste management system is really bad. So that has a huge impact on drinking water. Mm -hmm. Like they get water from rivers, most mm -hmm. likely from underground fountains. And this is sometimes um, polluted. So what we distributed together with several NGOs was um, um, like a water filter system, okay. super like a bucket system that you just put there, you put the, uh, the water inside mm -hmm. and then you get drinking water out of it. Okay. Decreases in illnesses and yeah, lots of, lots of things actually. So it, you just have clean water mm -hmm. forever. Um, and yeah, so the steps, <laughs> I remember we had to find a freight forward company, right? A freight forwarder in a remote village or in a remote area. I spoke a little bit of Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia, because I just tried to learn it. Because okay. if you, it's, I think if you, if you're in an area, you just you understand. Just need to start, yeah. yeah, you just need to start and you need to understand the people. And how are you going to understand the people if you don't learn the language, right? Mm -hmm. And this is that Indonesia has 17,000 um, islands and every island actually has its own language. Yes. Super crazy. So dialect, I think, yes. yes, but it's also like language. They really sound different. Yes. 
um, not every island, but like they are, I think about 200 different languages they have. Um, so just started to under, or started to learn and I started to understand a little bit what they are talking about and and this is how actually we got to yeah to to work with the different people um, and then you have to make sure that the coffee that you are sending is really coming to where you send to it. Yeah, yeah. You mean, yeah. What do you mean? You to mean? explain to people what do you want, something like this. Yes, so, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, this is how it all started. And then when we were in Hong Kong, of course, there are a couple of administration and things that you have to have in mind. You have to get mm -hmm. the certifications. You have to make sure that is it a food that you're selling? Is it a drink that you're selling? So you have to get like all the yeah all the um, different aspects of what are you selling and yes. are you allowed to sell it and what does it take to actually incorporate a business um yeah so then i can like speak about also could you, could you tell me uh i have some question in my mind mm -hmm. yes. first why is, why uh for example your coffee is better than for example Another, Another yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have? I know this. It's uh, <laughs> not like this question. I'm sure this is because. But a lot of people are like, why is the best? Not mm -hmm. like this person. Yeah. Because I want to do the same. I so think okay. Impact Berry is an alternative mm -hmm. to different other coffees. So first, you decrease 20 kilograms of CO2 okay. by drinking it. Okay. Per kg of coffee, so per kilogram of coffee, because we just don't export to other countries. We yes. just have it in Asia, so you can only buy it in Asia. Okay. Currently, we are just focusing on Hong Kong market. I would love to export to Singapore or China or Thailand or wherever, right? But um, it's only Asian. Mm -hmm. So that means you decrease your climate footprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for um, German people or for European yeah, people, it's a big thing currently nowadays. I think for the whole world, it should be um, rising temperatures bigger ozone or smaller ozone layer and everything and then well I have two nieces and I'm also like thinking in 30 years will they have enough air to breathe so <laughs> I would like to like you yeah, know leave the world a little bit better than um, yeah then maybe I came to it um, and yes why is it better um, yes you're right I don't like that question because I'm more a collaborative I have more a collaborative kind of approach to life so it's than my a competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but because you do good for the people the communities because we fund those social projects mm -hmm. whenever we can mm -hmm. um, you do good for the environment because mm -hmm. we decrease um, co2 yeah um, and you do good for yourself because we of try course. to whenever it's possible to work with farmers that don't use lots of chemicals lots of fertilizers it's essential yes. exactly and um, had a, has a major impact on your body and on your health right and I know that coffee maybe is not the healthiest um, product at all but I but think everyone loves, loves yes, it yes, everyone loves it and within the different coffees there are I think it's a great product yeah. you should try it yeah. <laughs>